So we're very pleased that Trevlin Lloyd Roberts, the CEO of Yeldor Manor, has um, been able to put some time in his schedule for us. And he, we're just going to have a chat now. So um, welcome to Trevlin. Uh, is there anything else you want to say, Trevlin, to introduce yourself? No, it's it's a great uh, privilege to be able to chat with you, Rosemary, and uh, thank you to St Stephen's as well for this opportunity. Um, I had a great time with you at uh, one of your Sunday morning services back in October 2019, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's great to be with you again today, virtually. Yeah. So for those um, that weren't there in 2019, um, perhaps you could briefly remind us what Yeldor is all about. So Yeldor is a, a Christian drug and alcohol rehab centre for men, uh, based near Twyford, the other side of Reading to you. Um, been going since the 1970s and we offer a programme that includes uh, rehabilitation, counselling, group work, um, some work on the grounds and voluntary opportunities as well as some housing in the local area for people who have come from a background of uh, drug or alcohol addiction. So um, Yodel does um, work with people who need rehabilitation from uh, drug and alcohol issues. I thought the state would have helped people um, with that. So why is somewhere like Yeldor necessary? Okay, so with, with residential centres, uh, a lot of them have closed over recent years. So there are fewer and fewer of them. And those that are left, a lot of them are, are private centres. So if you don't have the money to pay for your own treatment, there are very few options. Now, Yeldor does accept some residents who are uh, are paid for by local authorities, but fewer and fewer. Most of the people who come to us uh, are, fund, are sponsored. So we, we have Good Samaritan Fund where we raise the money to, to cover the cost of their care. And there is some income to other sources, but um, funding for people to get the, the intense service that residential care offers, um, that has been really reduced over recent years. And, and that's... Um... The sort of funding that St Stephen's um, is giving by its support. Yes, yes. And if people don't get residential um, treatment, then they're down to what methadone scripts or AA or. Yeah, so so there's um, there is some support in in the community, but there are often people whose whose lives are are fairly chaotic, or they don't, they're homeless, don't necessarily have a place uh, that to live and um, they, they need more than just an appointment every now and again or a, a check in with the recovery worker once a week. They need something um, more all encompassing to, to help them piece their lives back together and to deal with the underlying issues uh, for their addiction. So um, would it be true to say that the sort of success rates for um, an organisation like Yeldor, which is offering the residential care are they is that more effective as well it, it's it's difficult to say because often you're, you're talking about people with different needs um for the people who come here with their level of needs a community service may be not enough but if there are people with a lower level of needs then those community interventions uh, can help for instance somebody is earlier on in in their addiction journey uh, then they might not need quite what we have, but but certainly if if uh, if you've got housing needs, you've got um, health issues as well as the addiction, as well as the need to you know um, be able to support yourself going forward through job skills training, then then all that we are able to offer in a residential centre is uh, is a lot more helpful. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what sort of things? mainly does Yeldor offer to those people? So we, uh, when people arrive they, they would have a, a, a counsellor to, to help to unpack some of the, the, the deep traumas or the issues that may be led to somebody uh, getting involved in addiction. They'd also have a recovery worker who's able to help them with day-to-day -day issues. A lot of people come with finances in a bit of a mess or debts or, or other issues that they need to work through. Um, and we also offer um, discipleship. So we have a couple of people who, if, if that's what people want, we will do one-to-one -one sessions as well as groups, uh, looking at, at faith and how that can impact their lives and their recovery. So we try and look at all of those different areas. And, and as well as that, there's opportunities to get involved in work, either around the, 
the, the, the house or the grounds so that there's practical things as well. Um, and then re recreation, we have a gym on site and, and other things where people can, can just get involved in, in uh, recreation activities together. And do you um, have to help people through um, actually detoxing and withdrawing and do you, do you have medical staff there as well? So currently we don't. We have done in the past, um, but with some of the changes to regulations, we work with other centres to do the detox. Uh, in fact, in the middle of um, the lockdown, we did partner with the local um, community team to detox somebody here. So they were overseeing it, but the person was actually based here. So we, we've, we've done it in the past and we're, we're looking at restarting um, a methadone detox at some point in future when the circumstances allow. Um, but, but we're not a, we're not a medical centre. Most of what we do is more around the pastoral or the counselling side. Right. So people would have already gone through that somewhere else. Yeah. And um, COVID-19 and lockdown, it's affected all of us. So it must have affected the work of Yaldor and um, some of your staff live in and some of them don't. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so a huge impact. Um, where to start. So early on we made the decision that we were going to stay open uh, both for our current residents and to new admissions and work out how we could do that safely. Um, there were some of the centres either closed to new admissions or um, some of them closed down totally. Um, so we, we, we felt that actually, given that this is a calling, we, we were doing this because we believe God's called us to do it, that we couldn't just uh, stop doing it when people were at their most vulnerable. Um, certainly the, the early lockdown was a really difficult time for anybody in active addiction. Um, yeah, very diffi difficult uh, circumstances. So we made that decision and then everything had to flow out of that. Um, so you're right, we did have some staff living in and um, actually ended up being slightly more staff living in because uh, you know certainly a couple of people there um, their accommodation situation uh, fell apart as a result of COVID. So we had more staff that we needed to accommodate. Um, and then we realized we really needed the staff accommodation to be uh, an isolation unit for new residents coming in. And we were a bit stuck on what to do with that and you know, uh, trying to work out and pray for a solution. And then one of the staff mentioned uh, a convent down the road, which had a retreat house and um, I, I called them up and said, ringing from Yeldall, and they knew of us, there'd been relationship with them before. And she said, yes, I, I've got a six bed house that's not being used because all of our um, you know, retreats have been canceled. Would you like to come and have a look at it? So within 40 minutes of the staff member uh, giving me the idea, I had the keys to a six bed house that we could use, we could rent for um, our staff to use. And it was a blessing all round. So it allowed us to have really nice accommodation for staff at a point where we needed it, freed up a, an isolation unit for new residents to come in and for us to be able to do that safely. And we were able to replace the lost income for the convent down the road so uh, 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 a great blessing all round so uh, that was a change um, and uh, what else has had to change I mean there's a lot of obviously masks and uh, hand sanitizer and markings around the place we we had real difficulties getting PPE and and testing but that's a, a lot better now but we've we've had to adapt and, and really uh, keep a, an eye on what's happening in the local area and nationally and try and work out what, what, what we can do. Um, we've been very blessed in that we've only had, um, it, certainly in the second wave, we've had one resident test positive in one of our move on uh, houses and one staff member test positive, that happened to be me. Um, and I didn't manage to pass it on to anybody else at the centre, so, that, so that's good. Right, so um, the, the residents, part of their programme, do they um, go outside normally, go outside of Yeldor to do voluntary work and um, that sort of thing? Yes, they, in, in normal circumstances, certainly when you've been and done the, the core rehabilitation 
programme, which is about the first six months, then the idea is that people are rebuilding their lives out in the community. So doing two, three days a week of voluntary work placement, quite often uh, further afield in, in one of the local towns, or um, going to recovery meetings, doing your own shopping and cooking for yourselves and rebuilding your life outside. And obviously a lot of that's had to, to change and there have been times where we've tried to reintroduce that but then had to pull it back again. So it, it's been a real juggling act and really trying to work with the residents on that, talking with them about their needs, what they want to do. So at, at times we've said, well, to that group who are, who are on site but, but slightly further on in the programme, do you want to start cooking for yourselves again? Do you want to start doing your own shopping within certain parameters and uh, and they're keen to do that because it is that element of independence but then at other times we have to say well actually to keep the site secure um, we'll need to pull it back to one household and that means certain activities aren't aren't possible anymore. I think I saw um, on your website possibly it was a video or a um, magazine update that somebody got quite creative with a disused pool in yes, uh, yes. That's, that's quite a lovely story. I wonder if you can tell us about it. Yeah, so so we had an old broken down kind of above ground swimming pool that uh, had been donated some years ago and it was quite dilapidated and the whole area was, was just kind of forgotten about. And, uh, and in the earlier lockdown last year, uh, as a group of residents led by an ex-resident who, who maintains our vehicles, had this vision to turn it into a prayer garden and it was it was their own initiative, their own design, and they worked away for for months creating it into a lovely space. And now you know it's it's a lovely pool. Um, you know, in, in the summer you can see dragonflies and birds and butterflies around it, and, and it's just a lovely space that's that's being used by uh, residents, staff, and visitors just uh, as a as a lovely peaceful uh, part of the the ground. So. Yes, it was, it was, and it was really nice to see that being the, the residents' initiative and their, their hard work. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's some. I'm sure that if you were, if anybody watching this is interested to know more, that um, on there's the Yeldor website and the fa Facebook page, and yeah. there's been your open days being online and things like that, so people can see pictures, which will, yeah. would be great if you find that. We'll, we'll put a link to it at the end of the service. Um, you, you've talked about God's calling and you've talked about um, the residents wanting a space for prayer. Um, what difference does it make to the staff and residents that Yeldor's a Christian centre? I think, I think it makes a, a huge difference. It, 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 it certainly um, helps us know why, why we're here, why we're doing this. And, um, and I think that sense of calling is really important on an individual level as well as on a, on a corporate level. That, that we're here because we, we 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 sense that God has God has asked us to do this, and and also hopefully that changes the way we we view the residents and we see them uh, as who God's created them to be. You know, people that He loves dearly and wants the best for, and therefore we should also be uh, loving them dearly and caring for them, and 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 really seeing, uh, yeah, the, wanting the best for them. Uh, and also when it gets really difficult that just that, that knowledge that we can pray about situations that we can rely on the faithful gods um you know we, we we look at this last year and you know it it could have been easy to get totally disheartened or to um you know give up at so many points but but knowing that the we're doing this because God, God's called us to do it and it's his work and he will sustain us through it is is a huge strength strength I think uh, for for each of the the staff and the residents and and also just to see that the residents um, having the opportunity to get to know God and and what he thinks of them rather than maybe the the, the messages that they've heard through the the knocks of life um, and, and to really see them come alive and, and yeah, grow in that. Yeah, and what does God think of them? Does, doesn't he think that they're, they're bad, they're sinners? Is, is that how they feel? Well, I mean, we're all sinners, aren't we? We're all sinners saved by yeah. grace. 
and, and that's that's the beauty of, of the, the good news of the gospel isn't it um yeah you know god loves each of us uh, and i mean I, I think i mentioned it when i, I spoke in october 2019 that the two back-to-back -back parables in um Matthew 25 are, are, are really key for, for me and, and us as an organization where it talks about the parable of the talents where you know as an organization we need to use what God's given us for his glory for his purposes and then you have the sheep and the goats and you know it, it's it's clear that you know God cares about the people who are in prison who are, are poor naked in need and you know we have that great privilege to serve the people that God is passionate about through this this work. That must be quite transforming for someone who's not got much um, self-worth to, to realise that God loves them, cares for them. Yeah. yeah. And are they, I mean, uh, do you make them come to prayer meetings? How does that side of things work? It, it's, it's an offer, you know, in the same way that, you know, how, how God deals with each of us, it's an offer. Um, you know, so so we, we would, a lot of people come to us as a Christian organization because either they have a faith or they're interested or, you know, for, for many reasons. So there's a lot of people who are very interested or want to build on something they have themselves already. But, you know, it, it's an offer. So we would, we would, we would um, you know, the, the counseling, that's a part of the program. The recovery work is part of the program. The discipleship, that's, that's an offer if people want to engage in that. But most people do i think it's you know probably 80 yeah, percent plus would want to engage in the in the discipleship whether they have a faith or not whether they come from a different faith background because it's an opportunity to explore spiritual issues um yeah and does yeldall have church services as such within the manor or do you connect with a church somewhere well in in normal times we would yeah. be uh, different local churches on a Sunday morning and a Sunday evening. So uh, that opportunity to connect with uh, a number of the churches that, that we've uh, got links with, yeah. And are they, um, when they leave Yaldol, are they able to um, find a church? Is that, wouldn't that be difficult if they were going to an area where they had no Christian connections? Yeah, uh, uh, more and more of the residents who come through the programme are settling locally, especially as we've developed move on houses in, in the local area um, so that we can walk with people for longer. And a, a, a lot of the, as I said earlier about building a life outside of, of Yeldo includes, you know, recovery support groups like AA and NA, CA, but also getting involved in churches and house groups and really building those, those spiritual links as well. So uh, yeah, we, we can support people in doing that. Thank you. I just have one more question. I think I didn't really, uh, I introduced you as CEO, but um, I wonder what actually is, do you do? I mean, are you in, the, are you any good? You were, yeah. When I first knew you, you were go going off to do physics at university. Maths, maths. Maths, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so my, I see my role as uh, to, to try and um, support the fantastic team of of experts that I've got here who are really talented and um, really good at their jobs to do it so so I, I see my role is to be in, in the background uh, helping to create the space for them to get on with their job so if there are blockages if there are you know I, I, I oversee the functions like um, fundraising and finance and you know compliance with CQC and, and all of that, you know, just so that the people who are um, most involved with the residents can get on and do their, their job. So it's, it's my, my, my role to have the headaches about, you know, what the government's uh, latest things on furlough or, or uh, you know, um, CQC regulations so that, so that the, the really good staff team can, can serve the residents without having to worry about those issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always somebody that has to do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor, it's been great to have this conversation. I think I did promise to let you have some time for anything else you want to tell us about, but we've gone on quite, I haven't, didn't check what time we started, but um, is there anything desperate? I think just one other thing. So um, even in the midst of, of um, 
COVID and lockdown, uh, we've started a ministry for women as well um, called Esther Time. Um, and it started off, we, we had some plans to do that anyway. We were going to do a group in Reading, um, but then COVID hit, lockdown, couldn't do that. So we started with just a, a helpline. And that then has grown into, um, you know, some meetings when they were allowed and through this latest lockdown and uh, over Christmas, uh, checking in with the ladies who've got involved. Just because they're, they're, you know, when I said earlier, right at the beginning about not many residential centres uh, and there are hardly any of the ones that are around that are for women. So women certainly get the raw deal in terms of uh, help with addictions. And we know through this last year, that um, it has been a huge challenge for, for women, especially those at home with drinking levels rising. So we, we've, we've started to do something to try and help in that area as well. Yeah, I've, I've seen that on, the, um, on a Reading Christian site. So that's great to know that it's really did get off the ground and has started yeah. growing. Yeah. Um, well, we will put some um, links to your website and so on at the, at the end of the service. But um, thanks very much, Trevlin. That's great to see you again. Thank you.